The Caterpillar 994 wheel loader. It's big, but that doesn't mean it's hard to operate. This video will help you get familiar with the controls and help you get started operating the 994. This tape is broken down into segments so you can review or scan ahead for the areas you'd like to watch. Included are safety, the walk-around inspection, the operator's compartment and startup, the lock-up torque converter, loading the bucket, truck loading, roading or tramming the machine, and shutdown. Before we start, we want to emphasize the importance of reading the operation and maintenance manual. This tape plus the manual can go a long way toward making you a smart, safe, productive operator. Safety. Before we talk about the machine and how it works, let's address one of the most important aspects of running any machine, safety. Most accidents involving machine operation are caused by failure to observe basic safety rules and precautions. And as an operator, you must be alert for potential hazards. An accident can often be avoided by recognizing these potentially hazardous situations before an accident happens. Before you operate any machine, you should read and understand the safety and operating information provided in the operation and maintenance manual. Safety precautions and warnings are provided in the manual and at various locations on the machine. Be sure to identify and understand these symbols before you start the machine. Every possible circumstance that might evolve into a potential hazard cannot be anticipated. The warnings in the operator's manual and on the machine are therefore not all inclusive. If a tool, procedure, work method, or operating technique not specifically recommended by Caterpillar is used, you must be satisfied that it's safe for you and others. The walk-around inspection. Before you climb up into the cab, it's important that you do a complete visual walk-around inspection. The walk-around inspection helps you detect problems before they happen. On the 994, the walk-around is conducted from three levels. Ground, bumper, and cab platform. Let's start at the front. Check the bucket for any cracks or excess wear. Also check the tips, cutting edges, and wear plates. Next, look at the bucket pins for any oil leaks. Then examine the lube lines for cracks, wear, and leakage. Next, check the hitch area. Make sure the articulation pivot point is free of dirt and debris. Also examine the transmission and steering cylinders for leaks or damage. As you work your way toward the rear, check each tire for cuts or gouges and underinflation. Also check the rims and lug nuts for damage. Note any leakage around the planetary covers. Next, check the transmission and fuel level sight gauges. The 994 holds 800 gallons or over 3,000 liters of fuel. That should keep your machine running at least 16 hours, depending on your application. Now check the radiator. Be sure to have any debris removed since debris buildup can cause overheating. Note the ground level quick connect fuel filler, located in the center of the rear bumper. Check under the machine for oil leaks or any other damage. Around on the side is the engine shutdown control and external light switches. Also located in this area is a ground level fire extinguisher activation handle. Now let's go up to the bumper and be sure to maintain three points of contact whenever you mount or dismount the machine. The first thing you'll notice is the fuel tank fill cap. There's one on each side. On the right side, open the engine compartment door and check all the filters for leakage. Look for spills or debris. Check the engine oil while you're here. The dipstick has two sides, one for the hot reading and one for the cold. Be sure you're reading the engine stop or cold side. Now climb up on the platform level to finish your inspection. First, turn on the main electrical disconnect switch. It's located in the front panel of the firewall. 
On the right side is a valve for draining the moisture from the air tanks. Do this by stepping on the valve. Next, check the pre-cleaners on the hood for plugging. And at the rear of the hood, check the two coolant level gauges. Be sure the level is in the green zone. Check the battery leads and cables while you're here to be sure there's no damage. Before you enter the cab, clean the mirrors and windows for good visibility. We've been looking at a current production 994. Your machine may have checkpoints in different locations from those in this tape. The important thing is to establish a routine for your walk around, checking the same areas on every inspection. If you find anything wrong or unusual, be sure to report it. Operator's compartment and startup. Once in the cab, go ahead and buckle the belt and adjust the seat. If you're familiar with operating a 992, the first thing you'll notice is that you're sitting a lot higher up. As you look directly at the face, your view straight ahead is about 20 feet up from the floor. Take a look at both sides behind you. You need to develop a sensitivity to where you are relative to pickup trucks and other small vehicles entering the work zone. Now let's review the controls. To the left of the wheel is the single lever transmission control for gear selection and directional changes. The middle position is neutral. The lever should be here when you start the engine. Now to move forward, push the lever away from you. For reverse, pull the lever back. For speed selection, simply twist the grip to the desired gear for on-the-go shifting. To your right are the bucket controls. The lever closest to you dumps and curls the bucket. Next to it is the hoist lever. It raises and lowers the hoist arms. The switch on the top of the hoist lever is for engaging the lock-up torque converter. We'll discuss the operation of the torque converter in a few minutes. To the right of the bucket control levers is the throttle lock switch. This switch can be used to lock the throttle in high idle during loading. Tapping the brake pedal disengages the throttle lock. There are three pedals on the floor. To the far right is the accelerator. Next to it is the brake pedal, and on the far left is the combined transmission neutralizer and brake pedal. The brake pedal should be used in all roading and stopping situations. It's important to keep the machine in gear when roading. Do not coast in neutral. The transmission neutralizer pedal should be used when approaching the truck. When partially depressed, it puts the transmission in neutral. When fully depressed, the brakes are also applied. That's it for the major controls. Let's go over some of the other cab controls and gauges. To the right of the steering wheel is the turn signal control lever. Behind it, on the right of the dash, is the electronic monitoring systems panel. Below the EMS panel is the key start, ether starting a test switch, and indicator lights. On the left of the dash is a gauge panel that will help you monitor fluid temperatures. Top left is the hydraulic temperature gauge. Below it is a three-way switch to monitor three different tanks. Implement hydraulic oil, steering oil, and brake oil. The middle gauge monitors torque converter oil temperature, and the gauge on the right monitors engine coolant temperature. The two-way switch below it enables you to monitor either after-cooler or jacket water cooling systems. This green light on the lower left corner of the gauge panel lets you know when the torque converter lockup clutch is activated. Also on the dash are the switches for the lights and wipers. The adjustment for the steering wheel is on the steering column. On the top of the dash to the left of the steering wheel is a yellow amber over speed light. This light will only come on in roading situations alerting you to engine overspeed. The parking brake lever is located to the left of the operator's seat. Pull the lever up to engage the parking brake, push it down to release it. This lever also serves as the secondary brake. If the service brake does not work, pull up on this lever to engage the brake. Take your time learning and understanding everything in the cab and be sure you get comfortable with major controls before you go to work. Remember, everything we covered is also reviewed in the operator's manual, so be sure to familiarize yourself with that. Now, before we start the engine, let's review the electronic monitoring system, or EMS. 
First, turn the key about a quarter turn to the right to the on position. Directly above the EMS panel is a toggle switch. Lift it up and hold it. All the lights on the EMS panel should come on. If they don't, refer to the operator's manual or report it. The monitoring system provides three levels of alert. At the first level, pairs of the EMS alert lights will flash. This level of alert requires operator awareness. Report this activity, but there's no need to shut the machine down. At the second level, two panel lights will flash as well as one or two flashing red EMS lights. This indicates that continued operation could lead to component failure. Typically, there's excessive heat buildup in the cooling system, converter transmission system, or hydraulic system. Pull the machine to a convenient stop and have the problem investigated. Do not operate the machine if the indicator stays on or the alert light blinks. At the third level of warning, an alarm will sound in addition to the flashing lights. At this level, there could be loss of engine oil pressure, clogged powertrain filters, or no coolant flow to the engine. Further operation will cause immediate component failure. Immediately bring the machine to a safe stop. Shut it off and report the problem. Do not operate the machine until the problem has been corrected. Now that you're familiar with the electronic monitoring system, start the engine. First, make sure the transmission is in neutral and the parking brake is engaged. Now turn the key all the way to the right. All 994s are equipped with an automatic ether starting system. If you're operating at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, the ether system will automatically activate. You can also inject ether manually by putting the key in the manual position. It's a good idea to let the machine warm up for a few minutes and cycle the implements to warm the hydraulic oil. Also, check your brakes before you go to the work area. The lockup torque converter on the 994 provides for better powertrain efficiency when roading the machine. The rocker switch on the top of the hoist control selects the torque converter lockup mode. When the green light is on, the torque converter is in lockup mode or direct drive. When the light is out, the torque converter is functioning constantly. You should only engage the lockup converter when you're roading the machine. We recommend you manually place the switch out of direct drive and into torque converter drive during truck loading and cleanup. Loading the bucket. When loading the bucket, there are several functions that happen almost at the same time. Let's concentrate on the bucket, the hoist control, and the bucket control levers. And remember, the torque converter switch should be in the off position. Turn the throttle lock switch on. This keeps the machine at high idle during loading. Braking disengages the throttle lock, but you can resume it by pushing the switch forward. It's very important to approach the face straight on and keep the machine straight. Do not load the bucket with the machine articulated. Keep RPMs high during work cycles. The way you load the bucket will depend on the condition of the face material. Generally, you'll be working in either very good material that loads easily or tight material that's more difficult to load. We'll show you both these situations. In both these cases, you'll always load the bucket in first gear. As you begin loading, your bucket should make contact with the floor a short distance from the toe. When entering the face material, your bucket should be level or tipped slightly downward. This lets the teeth slide under the material and makes penetration easier. Make sure the bucket lever is set properly so the bucket doesn't ride up over the material. You'll probably get more than half the bucket filled in this initial thrust into the pot. In easy loading material, as you feel the bucket penetrate and the loader coming toward you stall, pull the hoist lever and raise the bucket off the floor slightly. This will transfer all the weight in the bucket to the front axle, giving tremendous traction to the front tires. Raising the bucket slightly also keeps the heel of the bucket off the floor which can make loading difficult and can actually lift the front of the machine and affect your ability to crowd the face. Now put the hoist control back in neutral and begin to roll the bucket back toward you as you crowd the face, filling the bucket. 
Now engage the hoist control in detent to bring the bucket up and finish filling the bucket by rolling the bucket back. Try to load in one smooth movement. Crowd, raise, roll, finish. In tight or tough material, after you've penetrated the face on the first thrust, raise the bucket slightly to transfer weight. Crowding the face, raise the bucket slightly again and curl it, flipping the material to the back of the bucket. You may have to repeat this process two, three, or four times to fill the back of the bucket. In all cases, when loading, the ideal load zone height ranges from the floor to about axle height. Before you leave the face, nudge the bucket control to shake off any hanging material at the toe. This helps keep your work floor clean. To avoid slot loading, work an area one to one and a half buckets wide per truck. You'll find the extra room makes loading easier and it reduces the chance of rocks cutting the sidewalls. When you encounter oversize in the face, work around it until you can remove it. When placing large oversize in the truck, put it in after you have a couple of passes in the truck to pad the body. Carefully place it in the body. To avoid premature tire failures, keep the loader flat on the floor. Don't climb or comb the face or drag the face down the bucket edge. Dragging downward lays the face back on a slope, making it more difficult to work. If the face needs to be trimmed because of undercutting, a tractor should do this work from the top prior to or during loading. Do not build ramps up to an overhang to bring down material and never climb the face to force a slide. When you're working in materials that are difficult to load, don't fight it. It's easier on you and the machine to go for lighter loads, faster cycles and the extra pass. Let's review the major points about bucket loading. Approach the material straight on, keeping the RPMs high and the machine straight. Crowd the face in first gear. Lift the bucket slightly after the first penetration to transfer weight to the front axle. Roll the bucket to keep filling, then lift the hoist and continue rolling and lifting in one motion. In tough material, you'll have to dig and lift several times to fill the bucket. And finally, use the bucket controls to shake off hanging material before you begin backing away. Remember, the bucket loads best low to the floor, not high in the face. Truck loading. Like bucket loading, there are key things to remember involving loading the hauling units. Again, keep the switch in the off position so the torque converter is not locked up. On older 994s, use the transmission neutralizer pedal when making directional changes. This saves wear and tear on you and the transmission by cushioning directional changes. Newer 994s are equipped with an impeller clutch that automatically softens the directional change. For these machines, we recommend that you not use the transmission neutralizer pedal when making directional changes. We do recommend for all 994s that you use the transmission neutralizer pedal when approaching the truck to dump. Let's now concentrate on the loading target and how it affects your moves. Remember, the truck operators key off your position, so be ready for them when they enter the work area. And always spot the truck with a full bucket. The truck will back under the bucket, so position yourself so the truck is close to the pile and at the correct angle, about 45 to 55 degrees to the face. The side rail of the truck should come directly under the lower bucket hinge pins. This tight V position is perfect for loading and dumping. You should now be able to load the truck with no more than one to one and a half tire revolutions in each direction. When you're dumping that first pass, keep the hoist arms low and roll the bucket, softly placing the material into the truck. This helps reduce damage to the truck body and will make things more comfortable for the truck operator. After you've dumped the bucket, again, keep RPMs high and shift into reverse. As you begin to move away from the truck and with the bucket still inside the truck body, pull the bucket control back into detent. The bucket will now self-level. After clearing the side of the truck, push the hoist control away from you, which lowers the bucket to the floor. Ease the bucket on down. You can feel a slight pressure as the bottom of the bucket edge contacts the floor. Now you're ready for the next pass. 
Take a good look at your load on each pass. The ideal load should taper from the front to rear and be balanced and centered within the bed. Try not to load heavy over the rear axle. As the truck body fills, it may take a little more time to dump that last pass. To even out the load, dump the final pass just behind the canopy and articulate the machine toward the cab, raising the lift arms at the same time. Feather the bucket a couple of times and back away, checking your load. Let's quickly review truck loading. Always spot the truck with a full bucket. Position the truck at a 45 to 55 degree angle to the face. Keep RPMs high during the loading cycle. Always load in first gear, easing into the first load to cushion the dump. On older 994s, use the transmission neutralizer pedal before shifting for smooth directional changes. On newer 994s, use the transmission neutralizer only when approaching the truck to dump. After the truck pulls away, glance at the load to check how well you've centered it in the truck. Now keep the machine in first gear and make your cleanup pass. For maximum efficiency, push the material toward the face, enter the pile, and fill the bucket. This will be your first bucket load for the next truck. When making several continuous cleanup passes, such as after a blast, use good judgment. Don't go too fast. Use first gear and only shift to second if long sweeps are needed. On each pass, always start in first gear and use the transmission neutralizer pedal when making directional changes if your machine doesn't have an impeller clutch. Tramming or roading the 994. One of the real strengths of the 994 is its mobility. It can easily move from place to place in the mine to do selective loading, blending and cleanup in addition to high production loading. So it's important to understand how to correctly road or tram the 994 from one location to another. When moving the 994 over a long distance, start the machine in neutral, shift into first gear and begin moving. Then upshift to second gear with the torque converter lock-up switch engaged. The lock-up torque converter allows for better powertrain efficiency and is better for retarding. Traveling in third gear is not usually recommended for most situations, as the higher speed can result in additional tire flexing and heat buildup. Tire life may be affected. Carry the bucket low and close to the frame and use the brake pedal to slow the machine. Well, let's call it a day. Before you shut the machine down and do your final checks, you may need to clean up around the face to get ready for tomorrow's loading. Do this work in first gear and in torque converter drive. The floor should be level, smooth, and drain away from the work face. Park the loader on level ground. Lower the bucket to the ground. Put the transmission in neutral and set the parking brake. Let the machine idle for four or five minutes to cool the engine and turbos. Once it's cooled down, turn the key to shut off the engine, but don't press on the accelerator pedal. This raises the turbochargers and can damage them. Remove the key from the ignition and lock the cab. Then turn off the main electrical disconnect switch and remove that key. Do a quick final check around the machine for leaks, cracks or broken parts and report anything unusual. Get into a daily routine and follow the tips outlined in this program. Read your operator's manual and follow all the safety tips. That's it. Have a safe trip home.